Okay, welcome back. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the simulator, which is the Phoenix model flight simulator. Um, uh, the Phoenix, um, I'll show you. This is what it is. Okay, so it's Phoenix RC program version 5.1, 5.5.L. Okay from Runtime Games, sold by Horizon Hobby. And the the 5.5.L, after you load the 5.5, this thing automatically lets you know that there's a new version, uh, minor version changes. Um, and uh, the most recent one is the letter L. So what I want to do in this series, and in this particular video, um, is to make sure you understand how the simulator works and to set it up properly and to do that I'm going to be using the DXE radio that came with the um, uh, Apprentice. So um, they sell the simulator with a DXE radio but since you've already got one, if you bought the Apprentice, then you don't need the, it's just cheaper, it's $30 cheaper, to buy the simulator without the um, radio in it. <clears throat> so the first thing I want to do is make sure you understand the plug on the back here, okay? So you, it, this cord comes with the simulator and it plugs into your computer through a USB port. And when you plug it in, you need to make sure that the off on off switch is in down in the off position because um, the simulator, you can see the thing is moving, the thing is spinning, the prop is spinning there. Okay. And um, so it works fine in the off position. The purpose of the turning it on is to broadcast to the um, airplane. And since we're not doing that, uh, this is how you set up a buddy box too, so you always have the buddy box turned off when you're trying to um, run a buddy box with these. So the first thing I want to explain is um, when you get the um, system and install it, it's going to want you to set up a um, what kind of uh, radio you're using. Okay, so I'm going to show you what what I'm using. What I recommend is the Spectrum DX5E. The Spectrum DXE Heli is set up for a helicopter, and but the Spectrum DX5E by default will work just fine. Okay, you can have a custom one, and I have made custom ones here. So I've made one for a DX6 and a Spectrum DX4E copy, and so I've used the four up to now. Now I'm going to use the the um, uh, DX5, um, which which does everything it needs to do for the DXE. So, um, with that default, okay, uh, let me put it back on the DX5 here. With that default, um, you can see down here that if I hit the panic button, the panic button lights up. If I hit the beginner, um, Uh, oh, wait, wait a minute. I guess I've got to turn the pause off here. Okay, so if, if, by the way, the letter P on the keyboard turns the pause on and off. When it's paused, it's not going to change anything. So this is beginner mode. I flip the switch to intermediate or advanced mode, and all that works fine. Okay. Um, don't worry about gear and dropping bombs and all that. That's just part of the defaults that come with the... Um, the DX5 um, transmitter. You can custom make one for this, but it's not worth it. The DX5 is going to work fine. Okay, the other thing about settings is the, fl the flying site I am using is called uh, the Flying Field, okay? And so it's a two-dimensional it's not 3D panoramic, but it's two-dimensional, which is better because it 
the three dimensionals uh, take a lot of horsepower in the computer and probably isn't really worth it. So it's a pretty straightforward um, uh, RC flying field. <laughs> You'll enjoy the little tree out there in the in the um, in the field too. So that's one. The other thing is uh, the weather. Okay, this is where you change. I hope those are easy enough to read. I'll see. So this is where you change the wind speed and all of that stuff. And right now everything is zero. Okay, so I'm not going to change anything for the weather. I I will add winds and other th uh, uh, other combinations of weather changes in future videos. But in this particular video, I'm going to um, to show you where all the settings are that you need. There's another good setting that I recommend, which is, let me show it to you here in the program setup. Okay. Under physics, crash, what happens after a crash? Um, the Phoenix uh, will reset and I change it to at idle throttle because if you hit the ground your chances are your throttle is going to be up and uh, so this will reset uh, the model if you have a crash um, by um, uh, pulling back the throttle and then it resets that's uh, let me see if there was anything else to put in this uh, obviously I'm flying the um, apprentice camera. Oh yeah, there's one more I think very important setting that I want to forget. When you go to view and you go to camera, auto zoom is good, zoom to small models is good, but keeping the ground in view is important and that may not be the default. Uh, I think normal is probably the default. So when you see me flying around you'll be able to see the corner of the uh, field out here and that corner of the field is your clue as to when to turn so under view camera make sure you have um, keep ground in view and under displays I like two displays one is the flight info and the other one is the timer okay so and uh, for your benefit, you don't need to do this, but for your benefit, I'll put the controller up, okay? So that you can see um, what I'm doing with my sticks as I fly. So if you watch this corner over here, you'll see me and how I, uh, and I'll refer to, to several times, uh, for you to watch what I'm doing over here and uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, maybe in another video I'll show you how to calibrate but the calibration on this should be fine as long as you if you if it asks you to calibrate um, then just follow the instructions I may do a separate video of how I like to calibrate. Uh, the only thing that you have to do is make sure that the the um, throttle trim tab, which is right here, is all the way down. And that should work fine. So, um, let me see if there's other settings that I want to talk about. Okay, so the, the other uh, um, keyboard um, things that are by default is the P button to hit pause and the B button which resets the model and when you reset the model it comes back to here so if you're taxiing around and you're over here like this and you go whoops wait a minute let me just try again okay you can just hit the B to reset go back where you were um, I also recommend that you use the timer if you if you come over here and click the uh, little green portion of the timer, you can see the timer starts counting up and um, it uh, will help you 
uh, keep track of how long you've been flying and uh, I still recommend uh, flying like you would at the field 10 to 15 minutes maximum and uh, take a break and then go uh, fly some more. Fortunately, you don't have to <laughs> add any batteries to this. Um, oh yeah, there's one more interesting thing. Uh, you'll see up here where it says the heading of the wind heading. So my heading is, is basically north. Then the wind heading says it's from the east at zero miles per hour. Okay, that's actually not from the east. It's uh, whoever programmed this made a mistake. The heading um, of the wind is what is the direction the wind is going to not coming from and so that's just a mistake in the program i'm sure though somebody will catch that and fix it probably after five versions they haven't though we'll see i may write them a letter but uh, so the wind if it says zero nine zero it's going to come from your left not from your right and uh, so i you might have noted that in the previous video uh, that I did about the simulation um, uh, number, f uh, the previous video to this one, uh, you could see that I was flying with five knots of wind and it said zero nine zero and it was uh, turning to the left, which means it was wind was uh, trying to weather vane the aircraft to the left, meaning it, it was coming from the uh, west and not east. Okay. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, these are all the settings and uh, that I use by default. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next video.